Hi, I'm Georgia Raisman. This is Front Up, and today I'm here with Josh Posner uh, of Sconset, uh, who's currently going to talk with us today about the Beach Preservation Fund in Sconset. Um, I know that recently the uh, Sconset Beach Preservation Fund got the uh, town uh, board of select, the select board, to uh, forward its proposal to the CONCOM for uh, the extension of the geotube project another 4,000 feet, is that right, or to a total of 4,000 feet? A total feet? of 4,000 feet, yeah. Um, so that was, that was considered pro forma probably by you, but not by a lot of other people. So tell us how you feel about that. How did, how did that happen, and what happens next? So um, we're very happy that the selectmen did uh, sign the notice of intent, which is what the application for this expanded project is called. Um, and uh, we have been wanting to have a full-size project, if you will, Georgia, for uh, really five years since this whole geotube idea came to the came to the fore, and. We have been successful in protecting a 1,000-foot section of um, the bluff and where Baxter Road was the most threatened. But it needed to be expanded. It still needs to be expanded so that the homes that are where the erosion is uh, eating away at the toe of the bluff can get protection. Your current permit allows the, uh, the geotubes for a, a distance of, of 1,000 feet, and you're expanding to 4,000 feet. Why, why 4,000 feet and not the entire Sconset Beach? Why not 7,000 feet? Okay, good question. Um, the, 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 the distance that we're trying to protect would run from the property line at the lighthouse, so the very end of Baxter Road, which would mean that it would go about another six or 700 feet north of where it is now, and then it would go south to the place where the erosion has started to eat into the bluff. We aren't protecting beyond where the erosion has gotten, and if the future is like the past, erosion will continue and the project would eventually need to be expanded. Further but south. Further south. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to protect uh, beyond what has already started to erode at the toe of the bluff. So north of the lighthouse is safe at the moment? No. Um, so the lighthouse property itself is about 1,000 feet long. That's federally owned? No, it's owned by the Sconset Trust. Oh. And uh, at some point they may be interested in trying to protect mm. that, but that's not in the project mm. at the moment. And then there's the area between the lighthouse property mm. and the beach club which actually has seen a lot of erosion. And there's a lot of has. interest on the part of the owners, the property owners in that area. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some interest even a, a, at the beach club because the beach club has lost part of its parking lot and it's, yeah, it's, and the whole, the it's whole right at the edge be, there. The pool had to be moved. In. Exactly. And so it could be that, you know, uh, but that's outside the realm of the project that we're mm -hmm. proposing mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You have on the website a very uh, impressive um, multi-page demonstration of where the bluff used to be, where it had been in 2013, where it now is a couple mm -hmm. of years later, um, and, a p and photographs of the project which involved burying some the first level of geotubes and multi-levels above that, mm -hmm. um, all of which is, is uh, very expensive and very sand intensive. Um, and the main, the main purpose, I think, in addition to protecting homes, which have been there in some cases for 100, 125 years and family experiences, is protecting Baxter Road. And uh, people have said that the, well, the town should just abandon Baxter Road and put up an alternative road somehow through the golf course and near the, near the, uh, near the uh, lighthouse. And what's your feeling on should they abandon get Baxter Road? Well, so we entered into a memorandum of understanding with the town five years ago because in the winter of 2012 and 2013, the erosion was so bad that the town actually started to have meetings about what, what are we going to do when we have to close Baxter Road. It wasn't going to be a voluntary thing. One more set of storms right. like we had just had, and it looked like Baxter Road was going to have to be closed. And so we proposed to the town that we work together to try to protect the bluff and also the road, um, but that we would also um, uh, cooperate in having a backup plan. And so we did, in fact, work uh, voluntarily with the golf course and with neighbors 
and with the Sconset Trust that owns the lighthouse, um, to come up with an alternative that would could be put in place if it needed to be put in place. But it's only available if Baxter Road has to be closed. It's not available if if uh, people decide that voluntarily they would like to close Baxter Road and hmm. abandon the erosion project. Hmm. So t t right now the road at its closest point is 29 feet from the bluff? Is that, I think, no, what I think I it's on? I think it's 50 feet. Oh, it's, is, so it has is, accreted? Cause I thought no, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't accreted, but once it's 25 feet away, mm -hmm. um, then you have to start really planning to what are we going to do. You can't wait until it's one foot away from the no, road no. to, well, that's to close what, that's the road. That's what the lighthouse people discovered. I mean, they moved it while they still had the distance to be right. able to pick the infrastructure up right. and, and move it. So it's getting close. Um, it's interesting because, you know, we've been at this for quite a long time, and it used to be that we would say we need to protect the bluff because eventually Baxter Road is going to be threatened. And our opponents, who have been relentless and dogged and passionate for a long time would say, oh, there they go again, exaggerating the impact, and Baxter Road isn't threatened. And now, of course, everybody recognizes that without this erosion protection, Baxter Road is threatened. So the, the project that has been in, in place for five years has had the effect of, of deflecting erosion for these five years. Have we had the kinds of storms in these five years that we'd had the previous 15, say? Well, we've had some pretty big storms. We haven't had, we've had bigger storms in periods other than this five-year mm -hmm. time period. But this past March was a really severe time. Mm -hmm. And uh, an awful lot of people who had been saying, okay, you've been in place for four years, but you haven't really had um, a big storm, a big storm mm -hmm. started saying, gee, you know, that was a pretty big set of storms. It's not always the size of the storm at its peak. Mm -hmm. A lot of times for erosion, it's the duration of the storm. And so a fairly big storm that continues for three or four days through it's six or seven high tides yeah, is, more damaging. is more damaging than a bigger storm that's only big for two high tides, for example. So how, how does this, when you've, when you've constructed these geotubes, they stay in place and the sand that is around them is the sand that gets replaced? That's the, the sand that gets destroyed by right. the, the action of the tides, and then right. that's what you come and dump more sand on top of. Exactly, right? exactly. And that's what's so interesting about this project. Um, the geotubes do work in a way that is similar to a seawall. They mm -hmm. will protect the toe of that bluff from erosion. And so mm -hmm. whatever is behind those geotubes isn't going to go mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. um, some, some people view this as the environment versus protection. We've tried to put together a project that combines protection with an environmentally responsible way of doing the protection, and, and that's where that sand that's on top comes in. Very few uh, um, efforts <clears throat> like what we're doing have anything like the amount of sand supplied um, uh, that, we're, that we're doing. And mm -hmm. it's expensive, but we think it's the right thing to do, and it is a answer to the question of by protecting your area, you're hurting other people. Mm -hmm. If we were not adding that sand, then yes, that erosion that would have been happening and that would have gone down onto the beach and then gone out to sea or would have gone one way or the other along the beach wouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. um, but because we add the amount of sand that would otherwise have eroded, the system is held harmless, and so, so that's why we no have we haven't seen any impact on uh, uh, the beaches. And it gets the, originally there was all these predictions about scouring the same way that seawalls or, or jetties mm -hmm. have a scouring effect. You have mm -hmm. not the, the scouring has been measured, or there isn't any scouring over. It? So we there has been no scouring of undermining the front of the of the of the uh, geotubes. People mm -hmm. would say that that beach will wash away quickly in front mm -hmm. of the geotubes. That has not happened. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the sand is, the beach is just as wide in front of the geotubes as it is in the area where mm -hmm. there are no geotubes. Mm -hmm. At the ends, you have to pay attention to that because if there isn't sand and if there isn't an angled deflection, right. you can that get scour. end scour. Mm -hmm. And so we manage that with extra sand and we'll need to make some adjustments to the, to the system as it expands mm -hmm. in order to keep that from 
getting undermined and getting flanked where the where the erosion comes around behind the project and, and undermines it. But we've, we've been able to manage that. Mm -hmm. And um, the other comment that people hear, that we hear is, is that it's Town Beach. Is Town Beach still accessible or what? Not, not that I personally have ever seen a whole lot of people on those beaches that mm -hmm. are townland. Is that townland still accessible? Uh, totally. Totally accessible. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very wide beach in front of the geotubes. Mm -hmm. Now, there are times during a big storm where the waves are smashing up against the geotubes. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to be walking in there that anyway. vicinity mm -hmm. uh, during that time period. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to be walking anywhere on that beach because there are, there are similar times, almost the same times as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. where when the waves are smashing against the geotubes, they're also smashing against yes, the, bluff. the unprotected mm -hmm. bluff. And so mm -hmm. there's no walking during that time mm -hmm. either. But we're talking about you know a few days a year or a few parts of a few days mm -hmm. a so year. So normally, uh, any, anybody wants to walk up and down a walk from Squam down to Sconset is capable of walking down to Sconset without right. having their walk in, interrupted by a big engineering project. A lot of people walk by it and wonder why the dune looks a little bit different there. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 I'm not saying that it's invisible, but mm -hmm. it sort of blends in. Mm -hmm. And above the geotubes, now it's all revegetated, and it looks much nicer, actually, than mm -hmm. the places where. Uh, mm -hmm. So speaking about sand, so we've been talking about sand, and, and I, the word around is that sand has gotten very expensive, and scouring out the sand from the middle of the island has gotten very expensive. Um, what are your What are your thoughts about how you're going to be acquiring more sand? And uh, you do all the sand replenishment in the off season. I've seen the trucks myself in the off season. So what's going to happen with that? What are your next plans? Well, we have work to do on that front. Um, we would like to and have done some preliminary work trying to identify ways of getting the sand, recycling the sand, if you will, from offshore um, or elsewhere uh, so that the sand that goes back on top of the geotubes is, this, is similar to or mm -hmm. the sand that is eroding from the bluff. Mm -hmm. Um, and so instead of digging a big hole in the middle of the island, take it from where the sand is going, mm -hmm. which is adding to shoals. You have to pick the right location. You've got to make sure that this mm -hmm. is okay with the fishing. Um, I remember the, the, the fuss over that. We've been working co cooperatively mm -hmm. and closely with many fishermen mm -hmm. to try and identify a place that people think is uh, an acceptable location. Mm -hmm. um, there's permits involved in that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the idea of the environment and protection means we want to keep this sand replenishment going so that our beaches continue to be fed and, and, and mm -hmm. we're able to maintain all of that. And so we need sand. It would be much better if we could get it from offshore, get rid of the dump trucks. We're not there yet. It may take a number of years until we have that in mm -hmm. place. And so. Mm -hmm. We may need to continue to get sand from the middle of the island, um, as we have been doing. Um, I've heard the idea floated about your offering to dredge the harbor and use that sand. Well, one of the ideas that, that we are exploring, um, and it also has some real win-win opportunities to mm -hmm. it, but also some permitting complexities mm -hmm. uh, and some cost issues, is um, to dredge part of the harbor, um, especially where it's silting in uh, around Pacamo. Mm -hmm. um, there's areas where the oyster fishermen, mm -hmm. where the oyster mm -hmm. farmers yeah. Yeah. are like, the, the, the tides are not giving yeah. us as much clean yeah. water as yeah. we wish. Does and that help? if we could dredge yeah. here, then you get the sand and we get the clean water. And, right. and it may be that that would be something that w would be a win-win and that we could work right. cooperatively with the town or with others to do. There's a navigation issue. Some people have sailboats on the backside, especially of Pacamo. Right. It's too shallow. Right. Now that seems like that would be a, it certainly would be a win-win. It would be a, a sort of a, a PR win-win too because there are Yeah, a lot I mean, of you know, I mean, it's not, uh, the more we can find things that everybody can get behind, the, the more I think this can be viewed as it really is, which is an innovative, environmentally responsible, smart way of trying to do something in this age of sea level rise and climate change. You know, there aren't many places that, especially a historic neighborhood, which are just going to throw up their hands and say, you know, 
well, it's been a nice run. Let's all let this wash into the ocean. It may be that, that that's the only alternative, mm -hmm. but I think that we need to, we owe it to this community to explore what are the alternatives really. It yeah. shouldn't have to be just an either or. No, I, I don't think so. I think when, when, I, when I hear people saying, um, well, you're trying to fight Mother Nature, I mean, uh, my feeling is we fight Mother Nature all the time. If we didn't fight Mother Nature, we wouldn't be dredging Hyannis Harbor. We wouldn't be dredging our harbor. We, the only question is, where do you stop? You know, what right. you, what, what's your, what's your uh, right. point? And, so and, and this is a reasonable point for people to <coughs> attempt to do and to see if it works and to give it a certain amount of time and, and uh, hope exactly. for the best. And, and even in the meantime, if it does or doesn't work, in the meantime, people are psychologically getting used to the idea that we're doing our best. And, right. and it may or may not work, and we may right. end up moving back. I also think it's worth pointing out that the value of the real estate and the value of the taxes being paid on that real estate along Baxter Road is not insignificant too. It's, you know, it's all, there's, there's a cost to everything and the cost to abandoning that real estate is, is not insignificant. So our project has been paid for so far um, completely with private voluntary donations, mostly from Sconset people and homeowners on Baxter Road who want to protect their houses if we can do it in a way that is sustainable. Um, so it hasn't cost the town from that perspective, and we don't see it really costing the town uh, in, in it directly, but it is already costing the town significantly indirectly. Our analysis says that about $150 million of our tax base has washed away with the erosion really? over the last 30 years. On Baxter Road? On Baxter Road Ooh. alone. If you take the assessed values wow. that the town assigns to every property wow. and take a look at what has happened to them because of erosion, it wow. doesn't take very long to get to that $150 million. There's houses that were assessed at $10 million that are assessed at zero today wow. because they're not there. It's so a the vacant loss of, lot. So the loss of tax revenue year after year after year. So if you add that up, that's like about $450,000 wow. of taxes every year. Every year that gets yeah. spread out around the rest of the island. So other people's taxes have gone up to meet the budget mm -hmm. in order to make up for the fact that taxes that used to be paid for on Baxter Road yeah. aren't being paid yeah. anymore. Yeah, which would only get worse, so. Which will only get worse. There's another $400 million of assessed value. We can yeah. wait until that's gone too, and then yeah. there will be uh, yeah, an so even it's, it's more not, of a drain. It's not neutral. I mean, it's not a net neutral it's thing. It's not free. No. No. Well, I think it'll be interesting to see how, uh, what the, the uh, experience with this. And I, how, do you, how do you expect your, I, there was somehow I think CONCOM is going to be a sort of a harsher environment to be making these, dis, uh, making these arguments in front of. How do you expect that to go? Well, you know, it's interesting. We've spent so many months and years talking about this now. When we did, when we did this uh, project originally five years ago, because it was five years ago, actually, that we thought what we wanted was a 4,000-foot rock right. revetment. Wow, yeah. And in fact, the Board of Selectmen endorsed mm. that back then and said, let's explore that, and we will, we will be in a partnership with you to see whether that can happen. And it went to the CONCOM, and the CONCOM started asking a lot of questions, yeah. and it was getting bogged down, yeah. and the winter was coming, and we decided to set aside that proposal and put in place a interim geotube project for the thousand feet most vulnerable. And that ended up getting talked about and the CONCOM said no, but we were able to go to the state and override right. the right. local CONCOM the decision. Houses. That and because of the uh, road yeah. and because of other public infrastructure. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Half of the beach Half of the bluff walk is gone. Yeah, I know. The bluff walk is a major be, public asset. Yeah, and it used to go to the, to um, the lighthouse. The, it used to go to the lighthouse. It now goes about halfway to the yeah. lighthouse. The northern part of the bluff walk will be protected by this expanded geotube project. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about that as, part, right. as one of the things right. that's and, getting. And that's got to be a unique. It, it is. It is, and and people are used to it, and and it's gotten it's so asset. popular that it's you know become more and more of an issue as right. more people know right. about it. It used right. to be a few took the bluff right. walk. Now, hundreds and hundreds right. a, di a day right. take the bluff walk. Right. Um, 
So, you know, it's not cost, it's not a no cost thing. Right. I think that the, I think that the Conservation Commission, I'm hoping that a lot of the discussion and analysis and questions that were there before can be answered a lot easier now because it's been in place. Right. A lot of the things that we were trying to answer, what would happen with the scour, what would right. happen with the management of the sand mitigation, right. would we be able to do that? Right. We're hopeful that a lot of the questions that were troubling to the Conservation Commission before have been answered. A lot of the question about what does the state law allow and require and what doesn't it have also been answered with multiple appeals that mm -hmm. we have won. Mm -hmm. So we don't know, but and, and we, we have it's been difficult to get the Conservation Commission to mm -hmm. to bless this project. But we are hopeful that that uh, perhaps this time, since there is so many of the questions that they used to have, you have data really, for. we really have data for yeah. now yeah. Um, that that. Uh, Hopefully well, I, hope people, I hope people uh, take the trouble to look at the Beach Preservation Fund website because there's a huge amount of information there and it really the amount of monitoring and the amount of, uh, uh, of information that's been collected is very, very impressive. And one, then, one of the things, well thank you, and, and we, we, we work pretty hard to get the story out there um, and there is a lot of information. Um, one of the things that has been extremely helpful for this effort is the viewing area. Mm -hmm. And so we have this public viewing area right at 85 Baxter mm -hmm. Road where people come by and it is a popular place, especially hmm. in oh, the summer. Hundreds, literally hundreds of people stop by and look. Mm -hmm. And so this notion of it's all happening behind closed doors and nobody knows what they're doing mm -hmm. and, and, oh, and wow. they're, you know, it's, it's totally transparent. Mm -hmm. All of the reporting, of course, is public but thousands of people come and look. And do you have uh, people out there periodically explaining what, what, what it's we all do. about? We do, we have some interns mm -hmm. who we hire and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and high they... school and college mm -hmm. students who are able to answer questions. Mm -hmm. We have a... Handouts? We have handouts. Mm -hmm. We have a audio um, mm -hmm. tour. Oh good. You can mm -hmm. call a phone mm -hmm. number on your cell mm -hmm. phone and ask one of, I think, nine different questions about how mm -hmm. Wow. How the uh, system works, wow. um, and uh, so and have a scientist and have a scientist explain to mm -hmm. you, you know, how the system functions. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope it sounds like there's a it, it's a realistic and 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 uh, honorable way to try to to see if those that area can be saved and, and uh, well, we're hopeful that it will work. I mean, as you say, there's no guarantee that it will work. Mm -hmm. We have given the town a large escrow fund so that if for some reason we don't do what we've promised or if the system does not perform the way we have, it's, it's, it's allowed to perform, that it can be removed. And so we, we stand behind that. Um, I, I think that the, 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 the key thing that often gets missed in the, in the passion and the partisan controversy is that what we're doing is extremely unusual and is not, it, 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 it's not a question of is it the environment that we care about or is it protecting the community that we, that we care about. We have found a way to do both and very few have. And I'd like to think that Nantucket as it tries to confront climate change, sea level rise, would do would 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 be smart about what can be protected, and protect it in a way that's environmentally responsible, instead of trying to just protect it like so much of the rest of the coast is protected without the environmental protections, without that's, the sand mitigation. That's an awfully expensive process, though. I think we're, we're, it, it is you know, it, it is expensive, and um, and it is not clear. It's not is. you know it's not something that no matter what it costs makes sense to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we believe that, you know, it, it's not just the question of how much does it cost to, to do the protection. It's also a question of how much does it cost not to do the protection. So but, we've just yeah. spent $150 million not protecting property. The other, another question is, who is the Beach Preservation Fund? Is it just you and Helmut and other 
individuals or is it is it a generational thing is it a family thing what's going to happen with it 20 years from now when this project is still underway assuming it's well, still working and still expensive well what we hope certainly is that it would be an ongoing effort that would be supported by the people who are the property owners at that off, time at that time mm -hmm. on into the future um, so the reason that it can work is, as we were saying before, even though it's expensive, doing nothing is even more expensive. And so hopefully there is a way of, of uh, sharing in the cost among the, uh, among the homes that are there so that the money that's generated, um, which is justifiable from the perspective of you're protecting your property, mm -hmm is enough to and pay for the project on an ongoing basis. And do you have that kind of buy-in from your neighbors at the moment? Yeah, we have, we have very strong support along the entire length of Baxter mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. Financial support as well as um, well, emotional Well, it, it varies. Support. You know, there's, there's more financial support from the people who are more threatened. Mm -hmm. um, there's less financial support from, for people who feel like eventually it's going to come to them, and when mm -hmm. it does, they'll be ready to pay at that point. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but uh, it, yeah, it, 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 we have dozens of significant supporters uh, mm -hmm. financially. Have Baxter Road properties um, taken a hit uh, in value because of perceived erosion, and oh, despite your, despite the these efforts? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there was one year. It was just right after this big storm mm -hmm. uh, session in 2012 and 13. It takes a few years for it to hit in mm -hmm. terms of the tax assessment, et cetera where I think around 30 owners went in for abatements mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. were continuing to be assessed mm -hmm. as if erosion had it not happened, happened. even though various homes had since sold for a quarter of what mm -hmm. they were assessed mm -hmm. for. So a house that might have been assessed for $2 million would sell for $500,000. Mm -hmm. And then all of the other homes that were still being assessed for $2 million yes, would go in and say, our house is only worth $500,000. Mm -hmm. And in one year, the town had to admit that that was true, and it wrote off $30 million in one year wow. of assessed value. Wow. Oh, Just another, in that one yeah, year. So that's another, another inducement to help keep the erosion at bay on the part of the town. Yeah. Just in that one year, that's enough to pay for more than the salary of a policeman or a, a fireman, fireman right. or a school teacher. Right. One year, Baxter Road. Right. Well, I hope that uh, I hope you have some success at, at the the Conservation Commission, or take it further than that. But I think having all the data you have and having proceeded in a what appears to a layperson to be a very responsible way, uh, it doesn't get too caught up in the uh, emotion of the uh, of the moment, and uh, you can deal with it in a straightforward and rational manner. Well, we hope so, and thank you for the chance to come and explain. We do an annual report to the Conservation Commission, which we've mm -hmm. been doing for the last few years since uh, we settled our differences with the Conservation Commission. And there, that's a, there's a very extensive battery of reports. Mm -hmm. And so the Conservation Commission has a lot of data, which they've discussed with us every year, mm -hmm. where they, you mm -hmm. know, some people are like asking about how is it working. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot to go on here. When, when will that uh, hearing be? Is it will, be, will that be a public hearing, or is that? A yeah, no, it's mm -hmm. a public hearing. Um, I believe it's. Uh, I'm not sure that the date has been. I thought it was scheduled, and then I just read something that they're not sure they've got the right dates yet. But mm -hmm. mid mid September it will start, mm -hmm. and hopefully it'll be an every other week thing until mm -hmm. we get through. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate your coming and clarifying all of this, and I do think people should come take a look at the website and, and uh, make their own, come to their own conclusions about the difficulties and the way you're addressing them. Sconsetbeach.org, I think, is the web website. Good. So, Good. Or just Google. Sconset or just Beach Google. Preservation Fund. It always exactly. works. Exactly. And it comes up. Good.